So we've talked about winning games on this channel all the time. We like to win more. We like to play some strong stuff. We like to play some outside the box strategies and we like to play things that win you games. So let's talk about how I approach aggro in commander as well as how you can probably speed your decks up if they're kind of going for aggro, but they're falling into the more mid rangey kind of deck. But let me talk about myself real quick. I really enjoy aggro styles. When I sit down for a game, I'm looking to win and I'm looking to do it quickly and efficiently. While I can certainly play in casual pods where winning might not be the number one objective and having fun and having a good table talk conversation is a great idea. A lot of times I do want to play at higher levels. I do want to play fast. I do want to win and I value my time greatly because of it. So I typically like to fall under the aggro strategies and aggro ideology. Because of that, I have actually quite a bit of aggro grow decks. At the current moment, I have Othari, Felix 5 Boots, and Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. On the CEDH to even more Pi Power side, I have Edric, and I have Rocco, which is a combo deck. All of these decks I would consider aggro, and all of these decks are very fun to play, in my opinion. But let's get on to the topic of aggro in Commander, and how you can also approach it if this is something you're interested in. First, we're going to define aggro for me and for us. Aggro is a deck that tries to win as quickly as possible typically follows a curve that's either heavily combo oriented or heavily combat oriented and it tries to assemble win attempts as quickly as possible. Sometimes having win attempts on early turns such as six or seven, and sometimes with combos as soon as maybe turn three or four. When you get into turns of three and four and you're presenting wins, that's definitely more on the CEDH side and I would not recommend bringing decks like this to a casual table or even a high power table. I also want to throw out there that some people really exaggerate their turn. A lot of people have the misconception of CEDH is winning on turn two. CEDH is winning on turn three. The rarity of cases like that that actually happen is very little. There aren't very many decks that actually win that fast. You need enough mana, you need plenty of cards, and you usually need protection for your win attempt. A more realistic way to figure out what turn your deck is trying to win on is to look at the amount of cards that you need in order to have a good board state, as well as the board state that your opponents are going to need. If you're playing something like the Jetmere deck that I have, there is no possible way I'm winning prior to turn six or seven. I need to get a wide enough board state so that Jetmere has full effect. And I need to make sure that I'm protected enough to get to that point. For my Othari deck, I need to make sure I have plenty of protection and I have a few extra combat spells ready to go. Because the fact that Othari is five mana, extra combats are typically five mana and protection is anywhere around three to four mana. There is no way I can say Othari is a turn four deck, even a turn five, six or seven deck. Othari's trying to go as fast as possible and the speed at which it goes, there's no way I'm winning before a turn eight or nine, sometimes a seven, depending on how fast I get out. So we realize that people sometimes like to exaggerate the numbers and turns on which they present a win. Hyperbole is very common in Magic the Gathering and in play groups online. So going back to the actual discussion, how do we determine what turn our deck wants to win on? And how do we make that turn as early as possible? Like I talked about in my Win More Commander Games Intermediate Edition, you want to be able to have a very strict and really good mana curve that you can ramp out aggressively with. If you're a combo deck, you might want a ton of mana, which means your first couple turns will be lots of ramping and lots of pieces that help you assemble your combo faster through either mana or tutors. But if you're an aggro deck, your first couple turns should be setting up a board state so that you can start swinging on turns three or four, trying to leverage your combat abilities to beat your opponents by turn six or seven. But how do we actually speed up our decks? Here are three ways that I like to speed up my deck. One is to get rid of win more slash mid rangey cards. Now, what is a win more card? And what is these mid rangey cards? Mid rangey cards and win more cards are a little bit different. So I'll go through each of them. Win more cards typically only give you a true advantage through playing them if you're already in an advantage state, in which case you'd rather play something like a win condition or just another card that can get you even further ahead than what you already are, rather than playing a win more card that doesn't actually get you ahead much more. For example, Shamanic Revelation is often seen as a pretty win more card. If you're already at the point where you have five mana and you have a wide enough board state where Shamanic Revelation can get you enough cards. At that point, you might as well just play a better five drop that can get you even more ahead. 
You already have a wide enough board where Shamanic Revelation will give you enough cards, but 5 mana could also give you an overrun, and this overrun could easily just win you the game outright, or put you in such an advantage space that you win the game over the next couple turns. Cards like this. So if you ever see a card and you think, this would be really good if I already have an advantage, or if I'm already playing a game plan, Typically, it's a win more card, depending on how much it actually synergizes with your deck. Next, we have mid rangey cards. Mid rangey cards are usually something that is played in the mid game or they're do nothing cards. Cards like Anointed Procession and any kind of token doubler, I see as kind of mid rangey cards. In most cases, you will play them on either turns four or five, and you'll start doubling your tokens from there. Most token generation, unless needed for a combo, is going to get you to where you need to go. Anyway, and it's going to be plenty of generation to get you over the hump. Other cards that are meant to be played in the mid game, but also stay around for a long time are mid rangey cards, in my opinion. If you're playing on something turn five and it's going to have a really big payoff by the time you get to turn eight, that is a mid rangey card. And in my opinion, it's not worth it. So we want to eliminate these win more cards and these mid rangey cards out of our deck. And we want straight gas in our aggro decks. The next thing you got to realize is you need to have better ramp or better card advantage. But in most cases, you can't have both. The only time you're going to be able to have both of these things is if you're in that mid rangey style. If you're focused on ramp, you need to put plenty of cards that can get you to the mana values that you need so you can play your combo piece and you can play your tutors and you can win with a bunch of mana stored up. Or you want plenty of ways to draw into your your combo or draw into more creatures that can help you win the game doing both is going to be very hard as you're getting rid of spaces for cards that can get you ahead for cards that can set you up better which means you are theoretically taking your foot off the gas just a little bit in order to run a bit more smoothly but that's not what we want we want all gas so it might actually be a good idea to get rid of any card advantage that you could have be more aggressive in your mulligans and be able to ramp out to the cards that you need or on the other hand have a very strict and tight mana curve where ramp is not super necessary because you have plenty of cards to play each turn with one land per turn and the last thing we want to be able to think about is you can worsen your card quality for better synergy similar with those win more cards and those mid-rangey cards you don't have to have the best card quality those cards are typically very good in a vacuum but in some decks they might not actually work out for you if you're trying to win as fast as possible a lot of people ask me in my Othari deck why I don't run token doublers and the real answer for me is that Othari already creates plenty of tokens and I find much more value from playing extra combats and protection to keep Othari there than to hopefully every once in a while have some token doublers that will just help me win a little bit easier but not that much easier Instead, I choose some of the more niche protection spells that allow me to keep Othari alive, keep my board state alive, and allow my deck to run smoother so by the time I'm looking to win, turn 7 or 8, I'm there with no resistance at all. We can also take a deck like Edgar Markov, for example. Vampires on their own are not used in pretty much any other deck besides vampire decks. This is because vampires have so much synergy with each other compared to other cards that they might work for that vampires as a whole allows you to work together. And while their card quality is not necessarily the best, they all work together in tandem to create an unstoppable deck that runs really effectively. So now we've talked about how you can fix your decks and change your decks for a more aggressive style. You wanna get rid of win more cards and mid rangey cards and replace them with cards that are gonna get you ahead as fast as possible. You want to choose either really good ramp or really good card advantage, but typically you're not able to choose both as you will start to dip more into a mid range style deck. And lastly, you can feel free to worsen some of the card quality for better synergy within the deck itself. So we've changed our decks and it's a lot faster. Now, how do we play during the actual game? Aggro is tough because you need to be very good at threat assessment. Are you playing against a combo deck that can be just as fast? That might be where you need to target all your stuff. Or you might actually benefit from going a little bit slower than that combo player. They will get stopped first and you can win after. In order to think about this game plan, you have to really understand the decks, understand your opponents, and understand your method to how you like to play. In most cases, I like to, in most cases, I like to go second in terms of win attempt. And I like to try to 
stop the opponent that pops off first. Just because you have an aggro deck does not mean you're necessarily the fastest deck at the table. There are definitely some decks that are faster than others. You must know if your deck is faster than those around you and how it kind of lines up and when its window is. This does not mean you should wait around for someone else to present a win attempt. At the end of the day, you are still an aggro deck and you still should be presenting a win either first or second. If the other aggro or combo player at the table is thinking the same thing, at one point you're going to have to bite the bullet and go first. This is why having protection or counter spells or unblockable creatures is great as they are harder to deal with and typically can let you win underneath the curve. If everything's already on board, there's not much your opponents can do. Whereas in your hand, you still have all the protection, removal, and interaction that you need. Finding that window, assessing the threats on the table, and understanding the ranges of your opponents is how as an aggro player, you can start winning more games. I hope this has helped. Thank you guys all so much for watching.